actually, I was here a bit earlier, but I don't know what my, what my Wi-Fi had some problems loading. So it took a little bit longer. And uh, so if my if in between, if my Wi-Fi gets uh, cut off or something, just know that I will be back. <laughs> in the words of Arnold, I will be back. Yeah, so we've got um, Nor Dalila is here as well. And uh, Barrett, morning. My Wi-Fi is so poor. Kogila is here, and uh, I hope everyone can see me and hear me. And uh, such a wonderful morning because we've got thousands of people on board. Putri Zulaika, uh, Ramdan, uh, No Hashima, Saiful. Uh, Chi Guan Kui, Jason, Jason, uh, Chuck, Lingus. Yeah, sorry, I'm back on again. Just now, it's slight like, get cut off for a short while. Like I said, I think my Wi Fi is not happy to be working this morning. I am, though. Uh, so thanks for that, uh, Nazmi. Gobi, good morning. And uh, Sumanthi, um, who else can I see here? Yeah. So yeah, that was looking fine. Uh, uh, a great morning. So some uh, today is Easter Day, by the way, and so some people are asking me, "Oh, but sir, uh, why are you working on, on Easter Day?" And I said, "I'm not working on Easter Day. When I'm with my students, I'm I'm sharing knowledge with them and I'm hanging out with them. So for me, it's not work at all. You know, in Mahasa, there's a beautiful word called amana." You know, so when you are teaching, when you are doing something like that, it's about amana, right? Now. It's about what you believe in and what to share with your students. And that, my friend, I will do any day of the week, <laughs> regardless. <laughs> so it's a good thing, and I think that's how we should look at it. Learning is, is that as well. Learning is a very precious, precious, a very important thing. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but today, if you notice, I'm wearing my New Rocks t-shirt. Azila, has you have you seen anyone wearing a New Rocks t-shirt? No, no it's only it? you. There you go. <laughs> Azila, Where can we get it, Prof? Hold on. I'm just gonna say firstly, no, you cannot get it anywhere, lah, but Hazila is gonna do well in this class. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm okay. set with you rocks, prof. You know what? I'm sad with you, Rox, because it recorded my attendance for two classes as absent for you. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, for him. Never mind. For the next two, we will replace it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. That, because sometimes, um, you see, there's so, so many of you, and it's captured um, by the system. So it could well be. Sometimes students are using a different... Uh, but for him, let me make a note of that anyway, just in case. Uh, because uh, so, because sometimes um, so it captures if you use a different email for example in joining right so it captures a different name or maybe you use uh, someone else's computer I think that's why it captures the name differently perhaps uh, so I'm not sure um, yeah so uh, hi Rosalia morning Morning, Prof. How are you? I'm not good because I can see that you're having both happiness and coffee. It is not <laughs> like, but I'm not drinking any coffee today, Prof. Fasting. I, I, know, I know you're fasting, but still, you put that sun that is <laughs> making us all. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but uh, so nice to see you. Uh, Kirsten Shaik, Shaik is here. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, Kish, Bro, how, good morning. How do I pronounce your name? So my first name is Kirsten, like yes. like like Kirsten, but Kirsten. Um, and my third name is Chake. You know why you say that? Because I'm not <laughs> the first one to ask you that. That's yeah. Good. So Kirsten, mm. like Kirsten, and and Chake. Yeah. I mean, people should know that lah. Better than people calling you wrong now. Orlando, all kinds of things. Like, it's a bit strange. I mean, Prof, believe me if I tell you that my name 
has been mispronounced at least a million times in my, in my lifetime right now. In a Starbucks environment, right? Like the no, I mean, not just in, I never give my real name in Starbucks. If I'm at Starbucks, I'm just K, like, like K-A-Y. Um, but uh, in, in a professional work setting, my, my name is the most mispronounced ever. Mm -hmm. I've been called Christine, Kitten, Kristen, Kirsten, yes. yeah. Like, go, all of you just call me R. <laughs> yeah, initials always work well. Right, guys. Uh, so uh, we'll get started immediately. Um, um, remember, a strategic management, uh, if, you, if you're doing an MBA, uh, a, the test is on application. It's not on knowledge. Uh, here's my greatest fear. When assignments are received, the assignments will look like textbooks, like reading a textbook. When we talk about Porter's Five Forces, there's a tendency for students to explain what Porter's Five Forces is about. Really not necessary, right? SWOT, they go on to explain what SWOT is about. No, we want you to apply. Uh, an MBA is about application, and you have a specific way to so very cleverly. What you do is, whatever you've learned, you've learned as good as knowledge. But now you have to apply and apply it to your specific organization. All right, that's what you have to do. So some of you may submit a seemingly good assignment and then you see you're great, uh, maybe not so great, right? But why? It's because you're not applying, right? Uh, uh, you, you do not need to tell us what what is my process is about, right? You need to show application. You should need to show evidence of how you're applying it to the specific scenario. Uh, and that's what a, a MBA is about. It's all about application. Okay, so be careful uh, when you're answering. So in line with that, last week we talked about something to do with a concept, an idea. I would like, I, I'm waiting to see your assignments to see how many of you can actually think of how to apply uh, the purple cow to uh, your situation, right? I'm interested to see that. Uh, and then today we're going to do another one that you can think about and becomes definitely very relevant to you in your assignment as well, right? So what I want you to do, essentially it won't take long, all right? Uh, especially for some of you who have woken up early for faster and everything, eh? I'm sure eh? you're tired as well. What we'll do, it won't take longer than uh, I would say, uh, 36 minutes and 14 seconds. Has it always happened here? Yeah. Yeah. All I need, I need, I need your attention for 36 minutes, 14 seconds. That's it. So what I want you all to do, Bharat, just relax. Bharat is looking like he's getting excited. Don't. Relax. Breathe. That's the most important thing in the class. <laughs> Breathe and just listen. And think about what I'm saying. The notes are already there for you. I want you to listen. And as I said before, think about your organization. Where are you working? People you work with, right? Uh, people above you, people below you. And what your organization's uh, mission or vision is, right? Because one of the key things in strategic management is alignment, right? Alignment means what? It means aligning the goals of the organization to what? Your staff wants to do. A lot of times, what the staff wants, what people who work for you, the employees, what they want, and what the organization wants are two different things. And you must align yourself on this. Because there's no alignment, it's, there's no syncing, right? It doesn't sync, right? Uh, so you can see, sometimes I use uh, I use Google Calendar. I'm sure some of you do that as well. So Google that is very useful because it's on your notebook, it's on your iPad, it's on your, uh, how should I say, on your handphone, right? on your own personal separate calendar. But if you allow it to sync, it will sync all the things together, right? So no matter whether you are doing something personal or office or business or whatever, it's all there on your calendar. It's synced. Right? So always the direction is the same. But sometimes something goes wrong and when it doesn't sync, you have a problem, you miss out on stuff. Right? The same thing in the organization as well. Right? So it's, it's, and all of you have got good working experience, so you know what I'm talking about. So that makes it easy. Right? Uh, 
Why? Because some of you are that employee who wants to do something else and not what your organization wants. <laughs> and some of you are the bosses and you know that you have difficulty getting people together to, to move in the same direction. It's, it's certainly challenging, right? So now, to get right to it, because I can see Solehan cannot wait already. She's, she said, let's get on with this. <laughs> so, so, hold on. Be patient. I will share. share my screen. Where's my screen? Ah, today's topic is so fantastic, guys. It's so fantastic. It's not even funny. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, sir, can we have the slides? I say, who's asking me that question? Uh? Jason. Jason, why you ask this question? The slides already been on your module. Uh? I checked in the Zero Europe, it's not there. Not there. I that's something I don't understand. Europe is not applied selectively. Uh Kairunisa, did you have the slides, Kairunisa? On your Eurox? As I understand, I can see there when I was looking at it's it. It's already there, but at the bottom part. Oh, I see. It is at week six. It's a chapter, yeah, week six. Oh, week six. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Time to burn the shit, Prof. <laughs> You see, because you guys are ahead of time. You see how advanced you are? Fantastic. Okay, now let's look at this one. The power of happiness, right? Now, this is an idea from Jennifer Aker, right? Uh, I was reading on this uh, thing and uh, it came across. And then I realized that, hey, don't you think that this applies in uh, strategic management, right? You can open any strategic management book, you won't find this. And I told you before in my class, if you are here, people like Jason, people like Rosalia who are here, they should learn something more, isn't it? Hello, Setakat Pacha Buku, reading the book. You all can do it yourself, lah. You know, <laughs> my book doesn't come to class. But you know, then together we can look at something new. Okay. Um. So. We want to think about happiness and, 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 and as we go along, I would explain to you because one of the key questions if you ask somebody, right, why you do something? And uh, Rosa, I said, what you, why are you doing this? Oh, because it's my work. Why are you doing the work? Then Rosella said, oh, because I need the money. But why do you need the money, Rosella? Oh, because I want to take care of my family. But Rosella, why do you want to take care of your family? Then Rosella said, oh, because they are my children. That, well, I hope they are. But more for more, <laughs> more importantly, then I asked Rosella, why do you want to look after your children? You know, eventually, you know what's the answer? Because it makes her happy. At the end, if you keep asking someone the question, it comes back to that. Ah, that's the philosopher in me. <laughs> so, so you, you, this is the key, right? Always asking why, why, why of the same thing. And you will usually come back to the same thing, the reason why you want to achieve. And so, in strategic management in my class, we cut through the bullshit. Sorry for that word. I don't know. We cut through everything and go straight to the point. The point is fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Why is your staff coming to work? Why are your colleagues working? Why is everyone doing anything? Because they want happiness. And today's class is so fantastic. Right? It's so fantastic because it's a class that will help you to find happiness. Is this not worth it, guys? This class is exceeding whatever you pay your fees or whatever is over and above. Because that when you came and sign up for strategic management or sign up with the university, did you think that we we're going to teach you about happiness? No, no, at all. No. <laughs> no. None of you did, but here we are giving it to you because we like to exceed your expectations. All right, so let's just dive right into it. 
how to improve the organization that I let's go. So the point to remember, and let's see if we can make it a bit slightly larger than it is. Ah, there you go. So why does happiness matter? Like the uh, key question is why do we want to look for happiness? Okay. Uh, and what does it mean to a lot of people? You can see that actually it is what people actually are heading towards, right? Now, when we look at the return on investment of happiness, return on investment, right? uh, as you know, when you invest something, you want to get back to your returns, right? If you go to an organization, and each of you think about this, if your boss gives you too much work, more work than you can complete, right? You will, at some point, if this continues, you will suffer from job burnout. Right now, too much work. Right? And you don't feel like going back to work. Then you are not happy. Whenever you go to work and you feel that, oh, I want to quit. I don't know if you have experienced this before. Jason, have you experienced this before? You go to work and say, ah, I want to quit. <laughs> I'm going to look for another job. Yes. No, Jason. Oh, yes. Jason, very good. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I just need to hire you. So you, you can see that, right? Now, sometimes you go to work and say, I want to quit. Turn away intentions. You're not happy. Like absenteeism, you find a way to not go to work. You take off. You take MC, you know. Why? Because you're not happy. Right? On the other hand, sometimes it can be that you go to work and you've got a lot of friends there. Jacinta goes to work and everybody says, morning, Jack. And this and that, and everybody says, let's have a coffee and we have a good laugh. You are happy right now. Your happiness level is high, right? Uh, you, you, in your organization, and I, and that's what we do, we do something to help uh, the masyarakat, the community. What do we do? We come together as a, as a team to help uh, some organizations, right? Whatever, like, we try to do something. And we feel that, hey, good, good, this organization, uh, we are, besides working, we are also contributing. We feel happy, right? You know, so you notice that there are many things, being cooperative, uh, doing something interesting that you enjoy, your happiness level is high. Right? I'm just wondering now whether when you come to this class, whether your happiness level is high or your happiness level is low. Which is it? Hi. Over the moon, bro. Oh. <laughs> very high, prof. Very high. Very high, yes. I'll say that. I want to know who. I can't because I can't see. Can you tell me who said over the moon? <laughs> the sky. Huh? It's me, bro. That's me. That's me. I'm making a note with your name in bold using Baskerville font. <laughs> 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 And I'm, I'm giving you the mark from the students who didn't say anything. I'm giving you the mark. <laughs> so, so this should be the way, isn't it? It should be. So that, be the uh, Prof. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt you, Prof. I was very, I'm so excited right now. But I feel that your voice is, or your line is breaking up. I mean, breaking it's up. not, yeah, yeah, it's not uh, that constant as smooth as question. previously. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. distort voice, distort uh, yeah, sound. I, yeah, like I said this morning, guys, uh, somehow the Wi-Fi is a bit scratchy this morning. I'm not sure why. Um, even In fact, just now, at the start of the class, at one point, it just uh, cut off and it came back on again. So, yeah, you got to bear with me on that one. I'll try to speak a little slowly so oh, that the Wi-Fi catches up. <laughs> please do, please do. <laughs> All right, so yeah, uh, truly sorry about that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure why. Um, right, so yeah, certainly. Right, so the point we make is that happy customers, right, uh, are certainly uh, more loyal. Right, they pay more for great experience, and they talk about their brands. Right, if you look at many of these uh, places that uh, uh, were around, right, uh, and you can think of many, many different um, uh, places that are like that, right. Uh, where people uh, sort of go towards something that uh, um, that's attractive to them, uh, and they're willing to pay more for the for the for the service, and they tell people about it as well. They share with people, 
right? And, and this is really great uh, marketing, if you ask me, right? So, but before we go on into the other key aspects, we want to look at the misperceptions of happiness, right? Misperce misperception is what? How do we misunderstand happiness? Okay, because all of you think, all of oh, you wow. think, you think you know what happiness is. Okay, so let's, let's take a look. So it's, it's, it's hard to pin down, right? Shortly we'll see that. We think of what makes us happy, but we don't really. As wealth increases, happiness does not. Ah, here's an interesting point. People think that when they have a lot of money, the level of happiness keeps going up, right? But it only does that up to a point, right? If you look at the green green line across this figure, you find that when you have very little money, this is a survey across countries, you are not very happy. And if I double that, say if I give five at least 10,000 ringgit, Hafiz, I give you 10,000 ringgit, okay? So Hafiz has got 10,000 ringgit, not very happy. I double the amount of Hafiz, 20,000. How, how is Hafiz feeling now? <laughs> Hafiz is very happy. Right? Now if I double that again, from 20,000, I give Hafiz 40,000. The level of happiness that goes up is not double again. It doesn't happen. You understand? This is known as the Easterling paradox. It's a paradox because I've given you more, but your happiness level has not gone up. And this makes a lot of sense because when we think about it, if you if you talk about um, Kevin, I think your phone is on Kevin Anthony. I mean, your your mic is on. So happiness does not increase. Because if that is the case, then we can easily say that Bill Gates maybe is the happiest man in the world, or Jeff Bezos is the happiest man in the world. It's not the case at all, right? It's not related. It's the easterly paradox, right? So I put an explanation here, which says that within a society, rich people tend to be much happier than poor people, but not to be happier than poor societies, not by much, right? As countries get richer, it does not mean that they get happier in tandem. Right. So uh, this is just this little argument. You can read about it. You can look up what Eastern paradox is. Right. And the interesting conclusion was that it's about relativity, not Einstein's relativity, but we're talking about the Easterly rel relativity, where he says that whether or not you're happy has a lot to do with what somebody else has. So just now I said I gave Hafiz 10,000 ringgit, right? And nobody knows about it. No problem, Tata Masa. But let's say I gave Hafiz 10,000 ringgit after the class, and I didn't give Sai that amount of money, and Sai found out. Sai found out that I gave Hafiz 10,000 ringgit. How would you feel, huh, Sai? I'm happy, Prof. I'm really do. I really, I happy. I'm I'm very happy. Why? You because didn't get you it. Are be, because you are very generous, Prof. Yeah, but I gave Hafiz. I didn't give you. Never mind. The worst dog is not gonna end. You're such a loser. Me, <laughs> Hafiz, Danny has to be down here. He's very unhappy. Happy days don't want to say, right? So generally, generally, right? If you didn't know, there's nothing. But then at the same time, as I said, nothing lah. It's good lah. Then while driving back or going back, uh, wherever he going, then he's thinking uh, at the traffic light. Why you answer people? Why not me? Why not me? He's thinking in in his head. He's thinking. I know. Right, but so I, 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 I was those I, I, I was that guy uh last decade, but after uh you saw now the I line. realize it, yeah I mean, I, I'm being honest, bro. I'm being honest. I mean, the sound sucks. I cannot concentrate. This is what 
paradox. <laughs> so, I don't care. I don't care about what Sai just said. I'm just thinking, at the traffic light, Sai is thinking, uh, why must Sir give him and not me? Like, why? Why the difference is running in his head? He wouldn't think about it if he didn't know. If he didn't know, no, no problem. Right? It's only... So now, now, listen, now, okay, fine. The next class, I give Sai 20,000. Last week, I gave Hafiz 10,000. Now, I give Sai 20,000. The question is, how does Hafiz feel now? Uh, Hafiz, how do you feel now? Uh, what makes him so special than me? No one got to ask. Go to yeah. one, uh, I'm also asking that's, the same question. What is about him? I mean, I would, I would take it. I would take it. <laughs> Just be thankful. Our graves. <laughs> anyway, the point is, you see, uh, when Hafiz got the 10,000 and nobody else knew, Hafiz was okay. No problems with him. But now, even though he got 10,000 for nothing, just because Sai got 20,000, now he is not happy. So you see, my point is, the effect on happiness or, or satisfaction, if you want to call it that, right? It's so, so different, right? It's so different. And it's because of relativity. When you're always comparing, right? It's always like that. It's quite natural to, to look at something and then, you know, people compare. Uh, and, and so that's something for us to think about, that it affects people differently, okay? So the other point about the misperception of happiness is that we don't accurately remember what makes us happy. Yeah. What exactly makes you happy is hard to, to, to remember that one. For example, when you are young, maybe you're going to watch a Disney movie, right? You know, remember, imagine you're four or five years old. I don't know the same for you guys, but you watch a, a Disney movie and then, wow, this is like really good. Uh, you know that a cartoon is coming on, Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck. As kids, this is big day for you, isn't it? Because it's like excitement, it's interesting, it's funny, it's something like that. Many different things make different people happy, right? Some people love the lights, as you know. But the point is, when we do achieve happiness, it fades and we adjust, right? Happiness fades. Happiness doesn't last. It doesn't last, right? So after the... Uh, uh, after uh, the MP is over, Sai has passed all his exam and he's now graduated. Wow, that day uh, he's very happy. So much happiness. Can he take the happiness uh, because he got so much, right? Can he put the bottle and keep it, it? Place it in a jar, keep it in your kitchen cupboard. Five bottles of happiness. So that's why like, on a certain day when you're feeling sad, you just take one of those bottles and open and <laughs> have some happiness. So you see, uh, you cannot have it. It just fades. And the worst part, you know what? It doesn't last, right? So the point is, are we commoditizing happiness, guys? We need to understand this. Are we saying that if I do A, B, and C, I'll be happy? How exactly are you measuring happiness? Is it because what you acquire, what you achieve, right? So how do we rethink happiness? Right. Like, can we say that if I have, if I do this, 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 I will be happy. Right. Uh, 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 <clears throat> later we'll see. There are many ways to think about this. The point is to design for flexibility. Right? The meaning of happiness will shift. Happiness does not remain the same. Right. It doesn't remain the same. And I explain to you why. Okay. Because people often assume happiness as one thing, money is happiness. Some people say, oh, if I have a house, I'm happy. Some people say, oh, if I have a wife, I'm happy, right? And even all the way, we have all even make the mistakes of saying, if I have a husband, I'll be happy. <laughs> then they never. Happy is challenge the power. Ah, that is what I'm going to So, 
people sing something that will make them happy, but this is again a problem. Okay. So the meaning, the meaning of the ha of happiness, it just keep on shifting, which is why we can't pin it down. Let's let's look at it. Right. I give you one example, guys. Because when you start simple, simple meaning you are, the the word the the letters eleven to fourteen, the numbers down there. You start simple, 11, 14 years old. When you're 11, 14 years old, life is a little simpler, isn't it? Why? Let's say Hafiz comes back from work. Hafiz says, oh, he's, he's uh, his nephews and nieces at home. So you know what Hafiz says? I said, okay, I'm taking you all out for a movie. I buy you ice cream, popcorn. We go for a movie. And they're all 11 years old. How will they feel? Very happy, isn't it? Very happy because kids... You just take them for a movie, popcorn, ah, they're very happy, simple, right? But as they grow older, when they're 15 to 18, right, very hard to satisfy them, right? They're always angry, they want to do different things on their own, I know. In feelings of confinement, 19 to 22. When you're 19 years old, what are the things you want? You want a car. Office, you want to drive. Young guys or girls. They want to be out. They want to be independent, right? If you want to make them happy, very simple. Yeah, here's the khaki. You can you can buy. It. They're very happy. Right? They want to stay out late. Do you tell them, okay, you can go out, but you have to come home by nine o'clock? No. But if you tell them, never mind, you can stay out. You can come home at two in the morning. Wow, they're very happy, right? Because that makes them happy at that age, right? And then you leave. Those behind to go conquer the world, 23, 26, maybe you are out studying, you're starting to work, right? And you will find that people are not that age, 23, 26, one of the key things you, if you're class there, anyone, any kid, right? What do you want? I want to travel. Yeah, always a young kid say that, isn't it? I want to travel, I want to go somewhere. All right, I want to travel to London, I want to go to Africa, I want to go to South America, they want to travel. And so that makes them happy at that point in time. And as they grow older, 27 to 30, maybe they have a job, now they're looking for balance, work-life balance maybe. Right? And then as they get older, 31, 35, hopefully they're concerned about their health, their bodies. Right? They, maybe they go to the gym, they realize they're putting on some weight, maybe they eat healthy, Right. Maybe they stop smoking. Maybe they do something, right? And then as they older, then around that age, maybe they're having children as well. And for them, the happiness of their children, right? You can have their kids and they have a, a great environment. That's important for you. That makes you happy. And then as you grow, grow older, 36 to 40, you want to have connectedness with your relatives, your friends, because your children are growing up as well, right? So you want them to know where they came from, you know, and that connectedness. And as you get older, hopefully you feel a bit more grateful for, you know, being healthy, for having a job, for being able to attend my class. All of these things will make you <laughs> grateful. And then as you're older, ah, 41 to 49, uh, hopefully uh, you're happy and calm, right? Uh, and then in the 50 plus, you feel blessed uh, because you're still alive. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> right on. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, I'm not kidding you. Know, this is true because you know, I had, I'm unfortunately very, very sad. A lot of my, my all of my lives, there are friends of mine who have not made it past 50. <clears throat> not kidding you. Not kidding you. Uh, a good friend of mine, one died at the age of 30. Another one died at about age 49. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, this thing's happened. So what I'm saying is, uh, if if at some point you're in your 40s and you're healthy and you know, uh, you should be grateful. So those th that becomes very important to you, isn't it? If I tell Hafiz, who's now at this age, I say, hey, Hafiz, uh, I'm going to take you to the cinema <clears throat> and we can go and have popcorn. <laughs> you say, yeah, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> He's not crazy about it, right? Right? Not that I'm going to do that, but yeah, there you go. Uh, so when our happiness begins to shift, we begin to search for different things. We search for different things. We search for different things. The question now is, we're talking about this, but how does this apply? How does this apply to 
strategic management. I tell you, it's like this. Let's say if Syed is running a company, right? So Syed started the company in his, in his 20s, and the people he employed were all his friends, and all, they were all in their 20s, and not young guys, right? And so, towards, let's say right now, Syed tells his staff, hey, look, guys, if by the end of this year if we achieve our targets, I will provide a free flight ticket for each one of us. All of us will fly to California. We'll fly to California. The company will pay for it. And all of them are young guys in their 20s. They are excited, isn't it? Won't they be excited? Because that's what they want to go to California, go to Google, go to see how Microsoft works and do look at all the startups. They're going to do that. Now, let's say now 20 years later. 20 years later, Sai is in his 40s. Right? He's got married, he's got kids, and his staff as well are in their 40s. If Sai wants to motivate them, Sai cannot use the same approach. He cannot go and say about this flight, you know, because a lot of his staff have already traveled quite a bit. But they have kids. So what does Sai say? Sai tells them, look, guys. If we do well this year, I will provide a scholarship for one kid for each family in your home. That's important to them. That makes them happy. They will work hard because it's very meaningful to them. Right? So when we talk about happiness in this sense, we need to understand that it's shifting and we need to understand. And if you, if you talk about that, what does that mean? That means you've got to understand your bodies. The CEO of the airline that you're talking about, you need to tell him in no uncertain terms, he has to understand his employees, not just the competitors, not just the external environment. Uh, this comes in your expectations. Because remember in the first class, my dad said you, it's a tough assignment because how is Hafiz going to talk to the, the CEO of uh, 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 Asia, the CEO of I mean, yes. can you talk to them? No, because they are more experienced than you. But can you tell them that they need to understand their customers? Yes. And by understanding their customers, they can know what point, what is important to them and have this alignment. You see how it works? Hopefully, you think about this and this becomes part of your concept if you think it's logical, right? So sometimes you want to go out some people want to go out there and conquer the world, right? Some people are like that. They want to climb Mount Everest. They want to do amazing stuff, right? Other times, people are concerned about work, family, health. Other times, some people are concerned about the environment. Some people are like that. They're very socially conscious. They want to save the environment. They want to save the tiger. They want to save the elephant, right? Uh, you go, if you go to on the way to the Malo, on the way to Wantan, uh, you will come to a place called, uh, there's an elephant sanctuary where people save the elephants right now. If you haven't been there, I forgot the name of the place. I don't know if anyone of you have been there, but I've been there and they, you can go and feed the elephants. You bring your kids there. You can really love it. You can bathe the elephants and bathe the elephants in the, in the pond, you know, in a real life jungle setting. It's very safe. Uh, and it's a sanctuary for. Uh, baby elephants that have been, uh, should say, that the parents uh, of the elephants have died, but it's still being looked after. So it's really quite interesting. It's on the way to, uh, I think just after tomorrow, on the way to Quantum, if you check that out. So uh, some people want to do something significant. If you look at Apple and a lot of these brands, they're doing that, right? So the question we have to ask is, as a brand, for example, as an organization, right? what type of patterns are you cultivating? Okay, <clears throat> As a company, right? are you changing? Are you shifting according to what your employees, where your employees are? Right? Number two, you want to design for meaningfulness. Right? This is very important because it's a better compass. In that direction, okay? I share with you a quote by Aldous Huxley, and he says, Happiness is not achieved by conscious pursuit. It is generated by the product. It is the byproduct of other activities. Byproduct. Byproduct of other activities. What does he mean? 
For example, in our university, so sometimes we do some uh, see our work and we go and paint a house, right? Paint somebody's house. It's a lot of hard work, very hot, right? We're very tired by the end of the day. But you know what? We actually feel happy. We actually feel happy. So that's all. Okay. Now, the another way of, uh, of looking at it is, for example, um, if you think about, um, let's see, if you see, <clears throat> let's say let's let's talk about Hazila for a change. So Hazila, if Hazila wants to be happy, Hazila cannot say after class, sir, after class at three o'clock, I'm going to be happy. And that be cannot say cannot say three o'clock today when I go home, I am going to be happy. Happiness doesn't work that way. You can create it that way. On the other hand, let's say after class, Hazila's mom is making cookies. She's preparing for Raya. Mm. So she's going to make some cookies. And Hazila herself is already tired. And not because of my class. My class kind of guy herself. She did something else, so she's tired. So, <laughs> but you know what? Hazila still helps her mom. Even though Hazila herself was doing a lot of work, she's tired. She helps her mom make the cookies. And after making the cookies, the mother is so happy. And the mother hugs and gives her a kiss and says, Thank you for helping me out. Um, now it's three o'clock and Hazila is happy, <laughs> even though she's tired. Isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. So this is the byproduct. Byproduct. That means Hazila didn't think that, oh, I want to have. No, no, no. She was helping her mother. And the byproduct of that, the result of that is that now she's happy. You see the point? So, this is what Elders Huxley is talking about. Okay. So, okay. it's hard to figure out that one. Right? So, <clears throat> but the important thing is when we talk about meaningfulness, because Hazila was doing something meaningful, but maybe strive for something like that in organizations, it must be something that's lasting, that's important, that's all evoking or intimidating. There is something that's challenging. For example, all of you are doing your MBA, you are coming for class every week, you're doing your assignment, it's hard, it's hard work. It's a lot of time. So when you actually graduate, how will you feel? You will feel happy. Why? Because it's meaningful, isn't it? You've learned something. You've achieved something, you've proven something to yourself and to your family members, maybe, right? And and so it is it becomes uh, more meaningful to you, right? And that can contribute to a lot of happiness. Okay. So so we understand how that works in the case of the example of Hasila, the example of all of you. How does it work within companies? Right? This is the question we ask, right? So in companies, you can have this thing called what's called a higher purpose. You do something which is bigger than yourself, significant. A good example is there's this company in the US, for example, and they say that every Wednesday, it's, it's actually a, a grocery store, a very large one, and they say that every Wednesday, 5% of their net profits will go towards the community. Every Wednesday is taking 5% of the net profit goes towards community. So if you are working there, and sometimes you work hard, you say, ah, that, 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 never mind. But this company, even though we do extra, they also help community. Isn't it? Yeah. So the, the organization has a higher purpose. Does your airline, company that you are investigating, does it have a higher purpose? This is something, even though that says all that Hazila and she's got no airline experience or anything, she can tell, isn't it? Hazila, do you have any airline experience? <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Suddenly, I find that she's actually the CEO of Asia. <laughs> Are you in the airline industry now? No, I'm in the Youth Development Program Institution. For the youth. 
for me to say, ah, so, so she don't know experience. So in that part, the assignment is asking you to make recommendation again. So this is the, these are the recommendations that you can make. Make sure that the organization has a higher purpose so everybody feels that being belonging to this organization is meaningful. So that's going to be in your answer, right? So I hope some of you are taking notes or writing it down because hopefully... Thank you, Prof, for the answer. Yeah? Thank you, Prof, for the answer. <laughs> Thanks, Prof. It can help you because otherwise it's hard to, to provide that kind of recommendation. So what are the drivers for happiness? Many things. There's higher purpose, autonomy, right? If I go and tell Fatina, hey, Fatina, you know, I put you in charge of this, you do it your own way, right? I just, at the end of three months, I just want to see the results. Fatina can decide how she does it. She will feel good, isn't it? Because she's in charge, right? She's in charge, right? So, uh, and then, or sometimes like Surin, when she goes to a workplace, she's got a lot of friends. Everybody says good morning, and she gets along well with everyone. She feels happy, right? And if you work in an organization that makes an impact, that makes, uh, maybe it's a scientific organization, something that does something amazing. I'll give you some examples, right, guys? But before the example, sorry, before the examples, let me show you what, uh, sorry, where is that? Ah, what are the uh, kryptonites? Kryptonites meaning what can take away right? the opposite thing. So this again, you can discuss with the CEO, whatever. Fear, loneliness. Surin goes to work, got no friends. She sits alone. She has lunch alone, right? Uh, <coughs> she doesn't get along with anyone else. So that can be pretty sad as well, right? So all of these things, guys, right? Um, yeah, let me just... So... The point is, happiness uh, without meaning is fleeting. Fleeting meaning it just goes away. If you get sometimes you certain things like okay, you uh, Azila likes chocolates, so we buy her one small bar of chocolate. Very very nice. So we give it Azila. Azila has she's happy right now. Azila, you're happy right? You go. <laughs> yes, sure, sure. Sure, but you're happy, but only for a short while, right? Now it's fleeting. It's just a very simple thing, right? It's fleeting. It doesn't stay. The happiness doesn't stay with you throughout, isn't it? Right. So for a lot of that, things, it's like that, right? So the other, the third point we want to make is design for small moments. Small moments matter more than you think. Right? Little things make a difference, like pixels on a phone. Right? The more pixels you ask, little but makes a big <clears throat> For example, mm -hmm. like, a lot of people think that in order to make the family happy, uh, what I should say, they have to have something fantastic. Actually, no. Right? If you tell the family, look, I know we are all busy, but every Friday at 9, 9 p.m., we will all sit down as a family and watch a movie together. Or oh, can make a big difference, isn't it? And it's not expensive. Doesn't mean you have to take all your kids on a trip to Tokyo or something to make them happy. But just coming together, doing something simple, right, can make a difference to your kids and to the family. Right? So hopefully a happy family is a result, right? So expectations versus performance, right? That sort of thing. Uh, so we want to create if you create happiness, it cannot be something that is not real. It's going to be authentic. Right? You cannot yeah. love pay that sort of thing. It doesn't work. Okay. If you look at Coke, for example, as a company, they say they always talk about happiness. Remember the happiness right next, open a can of happiness, uh, coke and happiness. But do you really relate happiness to coke? You don't. You know why? Because it's not authentic. It's just a brand. Right, no, it's not the real happiness that we that's meaningful to you or to anyone. Okay, so how to create small moments of difference? The third one, number two, number four, design for uh, stories, right? Design for stories, stories matter. Stories matter. Now, what do we mean by that? All right, you need coherence, right? Um, if you have incoherence, it leads to 
most like depression. What do you mean by incoherent? That means everything must go step by step, must be meaningful. That means, uh, let's say that uh, in the case of Hazila, she, she, she did her primary school here and then stayed with her parents and then she went to secondary school, they moved house somewhere else and then they went to university and did this thing. So everything she did was step by step, right? So there's a coherence. It makes sense. But there's some people who may not have that in the sense that they started off and then their parents left and so they were left alone, and then they were sent to a marriage baby, and they got in trouble with the police, for example. So their life is incoherent, right? Incoherent. Another way to think about it is your assignment. Is your assi assignment <laughs> coherent or incoherent? Some of you will get that comment from me. <laughs> incoherent. <laughs> that, that's honesty. Say that's honesty right there for you. Incoherent means you talk about one thing, and suddenly you talk about something else. The next paragraph, you're talking about something else. Incoherent. Okay? And that does not lead to your depression, it leads to my depression. <laughs> it is the byproduct for you, sir, if it's, if it's incoherent. Fatina, thank you for the analysis that is amazingly accurate. And so all of you, please don't give me depression. We Fatina. try our best. Fatina is very good. On the spot, she just analyzed the whole shit. She applied it. That's an example of application, guys, right there. All right? If you listen to Fatina just now, you would see that she just applied it right there. Well done. <laughs> Next time I'm going to put a, in the comments, incoherent and then stroke depression. Y'all make sure you read what you write. Okay, anything? Is it the same for corporations? Ah, corporations, organizations. Is it the same thing for them? Right? Organizations, interestingly enough, are actually a bit like individuals also because the organization started at some point. Then it grew, it became big. They have stories. Organization have stories. I'm sure your boss has said, hey, you know, 40 years ago, we started in the 1940s, 50s, we started like this. And then we had some difficult times, you know, we almost closed down and started then. So one story, give you one long story, isn't it? Corporations are the same guys. You know, when I work with, I work with uh, Sinaramas, you join Sinaramas, uh, APP, for example, the pub and paper division, they give you a book to read. The book is the story of the company. So that you understand how the company started. That guy came all the way from China and he on a bicycle and was selling cakes and newspapers. And today, it's a US, at the time when I was working, it was US 7 billion a year. Just a division, not the whole group. Right. So that's a story. Right. <clears throat> and they share the story. Why? Because then people identify with you the story. I don't know if I can create a... some of you were telling me the other day, how do I create a screen? I can write something down. Annotate. Okay. Annotation. Can I write it here? Let me try. Create, create what, Prof? A screen to write something. Can I use my pen? <clears throat> the pen symbol down there. I know, the I can see the pen. Now, if I write with this pen, like that, okay, now, very slow. Now. Never mind. The name of the boss. We call him Sila, very slow now. I saw you can read so The boss name was Jaya. I know some of you are thinking 
Sir, that's Pak Vijaja. Hello, Bahasa Indonesia. This one is called Vijaya. Vijaya means what? Success. In Bahasa Indonesia, Vijaya means success. So the boss name, boss, Pak Vijaya. Now the boss had a son who was my direct boss. And the, his name was, I don't know his name. Uh, as fast as I can. I'm fine, I'm nice. Don't push me, don't rush me, don't rush me. So the son's name <laughs> it's all your kids are uh, you're probably looking at the kid writing like this, probably much better than me. I'm going to put a shot from here, full stop. The son's name was Pak Tego Vijaya. So Leanne, can you see or not? Pak Tego. What does that mean? Strong. Strong, strong success. Solid, solid. Strong, strong yeah. Yeah, strong success. Wow, not bad. Huh? Your past Indonesia is so good. Huh? Okay. Can uh, the son had a son? Huh? The son had a son. I'm going to write down his name now. Some of you are trying to guess lah, I know. Can you guess what the son's name is? Go to go, Vijaya. I'm writing it down as fast as I can. Uh... <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Go Kanda Vijaya. Go the power of three. Mm. <laughs> but you see, guys, there's a continuity. There's a continuity. This is the story. Can you just switch off your mic? Can you just switch off your mic? Thank you. So, there's a story. There's a story to the company. There's a coherence. You understand? There's a coherence. I thought that was a great example of coherence. Right? The magna, meaningful, coherence. Right? You need to see how you apply that to your analysis. Okay? Now, Okay, so in, I'll just get rid of that one. Okay. So how do we create a coherent story? Right? This is the point we need. Well, in terms of your family as well, your own family, right? You want to know where your grandmother came from, great grandmother came from, and so on and so on. Know your story first. You gotta know your story. Know your story, right? What's your story? What's the story of your organization? Do the people in MAS or Air Asia or Malindo or whatever know the story of their company? What it's about, right? And more importantly, your current stories, your future stories, where you can go. Okay. Why doesn't the words go away? Do I have to get this? <laughs> I usually I use, use the eraser, bro. I know, la, I use the eraser. Isn't there another way? I just press the button. I see annotate. The annotate is not okay. Where is the eraser? Eraser. Okay. You know what was usually? I don't need to use the other one. And the other one, I have a, I have a pen to write on the screen okay so stories are important why because people get engaged if i tell the site i give you the rules and regulations to the company all these are the rules and regulations oh my god it's like a thick book you can't remember but when i tell you a story you remember isn't it a story people remember is the ceo sharing stories is he sharing conversations Right, so that people remember what it's all about. Okay. 
there must be a true line. There must be a true line. Now, what does that mean, true line? Okay. Everything must be a true line. So a theme, something that runs true, right? Let's say I'm going to go and watch a movie. And then I say, Jack, come, let's go watch a movie. <laughs> so I invite Jacinta to see the movie. But you know what? She comes late, 15 minutes late. 15 minutes late. And if she comes with a movie, and let's say she and her family members are there, and she's late, you know what's going to happen? She's going to ask everybody, who's that guy? Huh? What happened? Huh? Why is that guy? She won't follow, isn't it? Why? Because she doesn't understand the true line, the theme that runs through the story. So, theme for organization as well. So, like Syed is running the company. Yeah, he's been running it for 20 years. Very good. But then a new star come and jump. He doesn't know the story. He doesn't appreciate it. Right? He doesn't understand anything about the meaningfulness of that organization. See my point or not? Can you all see now how that should apply in your answer, in recommendations? If you do that, then you're on the right path. Okay? If you look at the story of Levi, Maybe some of you know the story of Levi, how Levi was founded, for example. It is a nice story to it. Levi was, uh, how should I say, um, it's actually um, uh, in the wild, wild west, you know, in the US, right? So you have these small little towns and, and people were there were building railroads, right? And building railroads was hard work. And every time people came back to the towns, <clears throat> their shirt was torn or their pants were torn. So there's this guy, a tailor in the town, who said, hey, this is a problem. He's a bit of a smart guy. So he said, I'll try and fix it. So he came up with material that are very strong. And he creates studs in the pockets and everything. You know, you know the jeans with the metal studs? He did that to strengthen the material and the joints. And that was fine. Then one day, somebody came to the town and said, hey, why are these people wearing this sort of clothes? It has good, it's very strong, good clothes. And that person took that idea and then made it go global. What was that person's name? His name was Levi. That's why it's called Levi's. The person who took the idea. The, the tailor, he remained poor. Nothing happened to him. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> but he was his idea. You understand? So this is a, so every organization has that story, right? Right. Make make the person integral to the story, a part of the story. Make the person who joined the organization part of that story. So you, say, you join this organization. This is where we are. This is what we've done. This is the coherence, and this is how we join this. Right. Brands too often make the mistake of trying to be the hero. It's about the brand. Who cares really? Right. Remember what we said in the last class. Customers don't care about you at all. Remember that? Yeah. Customers don't care about you at all and your brand as well, right? The customer must be the hero. It must be about the customer because it's about what's in it for me, right? Make the customer the hero, right? The other point to make is uh, don't manufacture your story. Remember earlier we said something about authenticity? It's authentic. You cannot just create a bluff story. Like in TG's case, it's a real story. And the story is telling you real, right? When you share a story, it must be authentic. If it's not authentic, America can tell. They will know. They will know this is not true. Right? It must be real. It must be real. Okay? Sometimes some people put an advertisement and say, oh, you can lose 50 kgs in one week. Right? You can sense that everything this is not authentic. Right? So employees must believe and be inspired by the story. This is your recommendation. This is a very important recommendation. So the job of the CEO, now you are you are the one pointing your finger and telling him, look, make sure you tell the real story. You tell the real story to your employees, right? And they must believe you. It must be real, right? And then it must galvanize them. In other words, it must motivate. You understand? So these sort of things, what even Kairunisa, she's not she's never worked in an ally before, but she can tell the CEO this must be done. Right? 
But I went to the interview, Prof. I say, then they didn't employ you, they didn't look at you. They didn't employ you, no? No, it's a stewardess, lah, Prof. I'm not suitable. <laughs> Uh, well, from the experience, bro. The least the experience. Aside from where we are looking, I think Kyrene is more than suitable. I think so. I couldn't agree more. I love bro. I can become the steward. <laughs> I can get a point, bro, on that. Uh, if Kalau side went for a steward and didn't get, I mean, understand. Nah, I mean, I mean you know, <laughs> you have an image to protect that line. Bro, I level-level bawa bawa cargo punya truck tu, Bos. Eh, hey, ini tu pun tak patah boleh. Kena ambil gambar pas. Cannot lah. Tak boleh pas. Tak pas. Tak boleh. The planes are expensive. We can't risk you knocking into them. So anyway. So. So it is something. Never mind. Karin Nisa. This assignment uh, is your chance to get back at them. See, ah. Uh, I'm going to consult you and tell you what to do. <laughs> better, better. <laughs> prof, prof, she already finished, Prof, the assignment, waiting to submit. I will submit that early. You never include all these recommendations. Who I say? <laughs> so, guys, one of the key persons uh, who talks about happiness is Tony Shea. Very interesting. Tony Shea truly uh, has. Um, Runs organization on that basis, right? And the story of Tony Shea, can, I put a slide here. I'm not going to run through that slide, actually. It's a slide that you can get on YouTube as well. Uh, i just show you a little bit. Uh, yeah, we won't go through that one, but uh, when you, you see your slides, you will see that. It's about Tony Shea. If you go on to YouTube, you see Tony Shea and Happiness. And he gives you a short clip, about 20 minutes, and how he applies the concept of happiness into his organization. It's quite interesting. So you cannot manufacture. Authenticity is important, right? Uh, and sometimes there's a time for a new story, right? New things are happening, right? Uh, new challenges, new, so the story continues for organizations as well. So MAS or Air Asia or other organizations, and I also have new stories, new challenges, right? very interesting. And stories allow you to connect. Ah, it's really important. Connection. Right? So you feel you have staff, you have employee, you feel connected. I understand the story. Right? Imagine me as a Malaysian myself. Working in an Indonesian company, and I first joined like oh, going through what is this Indonesian company. But then, when you get to understand the story and see what they're doing and where they're going, suddenly there is a connection. And even though I'm running the Malaysian office, that connection is there because there's a coherence and understanding. Okay, so uh, I'll give you one example, quick example, guys. It is a story called Gotten Up. Uh, in terms of connections, right? Just think about this the, the milk farmers. The milk producers in the United States. Now, milk is an old industry, right? A big market share. But that market share, they are losing very quickly. Why? Because uh, now you've got soya milk, you've got vegan milk, you've got all kinds of milk. China. It's being replaced. Milk is not just milk anymore. And so they were losing market share. So they, the association came together and they said, look, guys, let's do a campaign to get people to drink cow's milk again. Right. So they spoke to many advertisers and they came up with this, uh, the advertising company came up with this um, marketing strategy, advertising strategy, and it's called Got Milk. And this is what they did. They came up with these sort of posters, which they placed everywhere. Uh, how are these posters linked to milk? The celebrities are drinking milk. They have milk mustache there. Perfect. Fatina, you're actually correct. The, these are celebrities with the milk mustache, right? So you've got uh, your favorite uh, Wolverine. <laughs> but, but... And also healthy body. Healthy body, that's right. Uh, great singing voice. Beckham <laughs> is like mine. Well, okay. Okay, this morning, not everything, uh, Karina, not everything is authentic. Lah, whatever you listen to this morning, somebody. Ah, now that's an example. What site said just now is not authentic. Okay, guys, just to show you the contrast, the difference, uh, and so on, right? But you know what? 
this advertising campaign did not work. It did not work. Why? I think it's because people didn't identify. Yeah, Taylor Swift is Taylor Swift. Now, Wolverine is Wolverine. Now. The last time I checked my hand, uh, nothing coming out also. So people didn't identify uh, with these stars, right? Now, because they were like, in a sense, not ordinary people, right? So back to the drawing board, they went and speak to them. And the advertisers again to change the strategy. And they came up with this strategy. New strategy is called Milk Life to try and you know, get people to drink more milk. And this strategy looked like this. I'll show you what it looked like. You're the most out of yourself. And out of life. Start your day with the power of protein, milk life. And this, you know, what's different about this strategy is to do with people with ordinary things every day, right? And that people will do so. It, it identify more with people. So, again, guys, the point is the connectedness. You must connect, right? So sometimes the CEO or whoever the boss is has a way of talking that that the staff don't understand. I know uh, they have uh, an approach that may not be connected with the staff, right? So a good story is like a roller coaster, right? Roller coaster. You've been on a roller coaster? I absolutely hate roller coasters because it makes me sick. Same as me, bro. Me too. Same as me. Me too. Me too. <laughs> it's the most horrible thing. It's I, nice, bro. Ah, uh, these are people you, who you are get not. The it's fine, you get to see It's fine. Those who like it, my wife likes roller coasters now. They're not well. Let's see. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a horrible thing. This will, you know, when you're on a roller coaster, it goes so fast, your stomach is left behind, you know. <laughs> it's horrible. I, I, I you just, will get heart attack. Uh, yeah, uh, well, not that bad, but yeah. So, But a, ro a story. Come in, Krukuno. Let me mark it. Uh, yeah, so we like it. Thank you. Uh, so, a, a, a story has got ups and downs, isn't it? If you have a story, for example, where the hero wins all the time, oh, he wins every time, right? right? And some stories are like that the hero wins, 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 wins. It gets boring, right? You want to see a story where it goes. You know, sad, happy, success, failure. You know, you know, stories should be like that. Then it makes sense to you, right? Then you want to watch it. And life, life stories are like that, right? If you look at Hasbro and Mattel, what is the, what is this company is about? In what industry are they in? Hasbro, Mattel, oh. Lego, toys. Yeah. Isn't it toys? It's toy. Toys. Lego. You will notice that they are. Strategy is different, right? Uh, the way they grow, right? So I will just take an annotation here. I try to grab a pen. Grab a pen. So if you look at Lego, they grow. They grow. What this is the word? They grow organically. Uh, Oh, this is painful. Uh, but actually, it's good because honestly, if you. Yeah, they grow organically. What does that mean? That means Lego has this strategy where they will only grow by expanding their own companies. So they will open their own Lego here in China, in Johor, anywhere else. They open them. On the other hand, Hasbro and Mattel, which are also toy companies, but they grow by oh. you know this is called Chaka Ayam. Chaka Ayam is better actually. Acquisition. 
they grow by acquisition. That means they acquire other companies. So you know, people like Hasbro and Mattel, if they come across another toy company that is really good, they will buy them. They will not do that. So you can see that each company has got their own approach, their own story, story their own strategy. Does the company that you are uh, analyzing today have their own strategy? Is it clear? So this is something to think about. And now I will now find that eraser. And very quickly, now it really is working very well, I must say. Uh, yeah. It's no. So, bank on your stories, stories are essence. Okay. What are your signature stories? Key stories within your organizations, right? Sometimes stories about suffering and transformation. Oh, wow, okay. 10 years ago, during the fall, maybe five years ago during COVID, we almost closed down, right? But we worked hard. We came together as a team and we built a company. So these are good stories to tell, like these are same stories, right? And something, sometimes it's part of something larger, right? So guys, basically in sum, we say that we think we can attain happiness, but not so easy, right? How do we, how do we gain happiness both in terms of organizations, in terms of uh, employees, you know, and as part of us, how do we inculcate that as part of strategy? Right. So now that you've heard of all of these things, you should now think about how does that change your approach to strategy management. Right. So the textbooks don't discuss this, but in my opinion, this is so important because when you ask the question why, 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 it always comes down to happiness for sure. Right. So this is very, very important. Has the CEO thought about this? Does he understand that happiness is fleeting? Well, I can tell you that this evening, Cairo Nisa will be telling them exactly what needs to be done. Not because she's unhappy that she was not chosen. No, no, no. It's not sour grapes. Well, a little bit, but, right? but it's okay because she's on to bigger and better things and she's got her own coherent story that she's going to tell. All right, and that will change things so amazingly. All right, wow. We almost feel like we want to listen to Kairunisa now telling us. I agree, <laughs> Prof. I, I agree. Please proceed, Prof. Why to happy? People on the line, and it's not about him. I'm very happy to put people on the throw them under the bus. <laughs> okay, anyway, the point is if you listen and you reflected on your own organization and you reflected on the uh, airlines, you find that you have a lot to say in the communications. That's what I'm saying. And here's another trick, guys when you answer the question. Okay, the points are one thing, but you can use, you can talk about the airlines, but the particular airline, but use your own organization as an example. See my point? That makes your answer different. Let me just say, oh, they should be doing this. For example, in my organization, we did not do this, and this is what happened. You understand? If you write like that, now your answer will stand up. Otherwise, all the answers will look the same. And when I read the answer, I cannot hear Kairunisa's voice. I cannot hear Solihan's voice. I, I, I cannot hear Rosalia's voice. Oh, very sad. <laughs> okay, so I hope those things will help you, and uh, I'm sure they will. All right, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing your work, and I'm sure that uh, you will not disappoint. And because if you do, then next week, if you notice that I am depressed, you know why. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Just let's see. Nisa sent uh, Simon tomorrow. And you will be marking it the next day. Like, because no. you said... No. no. It, depending on the, de the deadline. Oh. If the deadline... Ah, if the date, you see, I allocate the time. So today is your date of submission, right? You can submit uh, yesterday, day before, whatever. I'm only marking it 
And when I mark it, you'll see the results fade away on your grades. So if let's say today is the deadline, I would have allocated like the, the next day or the day after two days, let's say, for example, to do the marking. Let's say about it. Prof, mm. yeah, he just wants to pressure me, huh, Prof. <laughs> It's just <laughs> I'm pressuring myself, bro, because I've just completed two only without the appendixes. Let me just say that you were not even called for the interview. At least Nisa was called for the interview. Nisa, dia tak dipanggil langsung. <laughs> he was. That was the so, false so... candidate, bro. That was the false candidate. No. <laughs> so, okay, guys, uh, we're done for the day. Uh, that's enough learning. Uh, I, 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 know, I know some of you like, can't wait to that. leave the class and start doing your assignment. You're so excited. right? Uh, and I'm excited for you as well. So I will definitely see you all next week. And another thing is, guys, whenever the purpose of a, a portal, which is Urox, is for us to gather and all the information is there. Don't worry whether it's in the third week, fourth week. You should look at everything. That's one thing. Secondly, when you submit an assignment, don't write to me in, on WhatsApp and say, Prof, I've submitted my assignment. Why? Why? What's the purpose? This is a duplication. The purpose of the box is that. Is that when you submit it, you submit it. Like, it's there. You don't have to write to me and tell me that you have submitted. Imagine that 200 students, even if, I don't know, 20% of you, 40 or 50 of you are writing to me and say, sir, I've submitted. Oh, why write to me? No need. Then get it's, more depressed. <laughs> the point is that's the, the concept behind Eurox. Eurox is that platform. Plus, on top of that, we have WhatsApp as well. And even on WhatsApp, uh, when I say people, students write to me, they write to me personally, directly, you know. And the best part is students always start the WhatsApp by saying, so sorry to disturb you. No, 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 you disturbing me already. <laughs> Sorry. And then some students even better. Hi, good morning, Prof. Full stop, Sam. Uh, so I have a question to ask. Full stop, Sam. <laughs> and then they are waiting for us to reply them. Ah, and ah, it was idea. That's one more thing. If I happen to be looking at it, it's writing. Side is writing. It's typing. And that's what it is typing. Very nonsense. Just write what if you have to write something, write it and say it and send it. That's it. No need to have all these long stories and all that, you know, not only for me, la, also for your other lecturers. La. It makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, th uh, thank you, Prof, for the enlightenment. I mean, now I know that my assignment needs to be very concise and very straightforward. No bunga-bunga or flowery words, you know. Thank you, Prof. What's, what's that? In WhatsApp, yeah, you have to be straight and to the point. You know, I remember uh, working with, um, I was working, I thought you was working with uh, three other partners and we were running this VC company out of Singapore. And the two of them are from India. And those guys are brilliant guys, right? And when somebody calls them, you know what's the word they use? Tell me. Any of you have worked with people out of India? I'm talking about some really top notch guys. They pick up. I... The I've like I've been licensing previous in my previous one I've been licensing with team in uh Delhi and Mumbai. I my point is that people are on the move and people are busy, people want to get things done. They've got no time for all these other things. Just say tell me so that we can solve the problem and move on. All right. So in many but in the, for the most part, if you've submitted something on your office account, tomorrow when you don't see your grades or something, then you can say, Oh, uh, but where are my grades? Uh, maybe something went wrong. That's fair. Right. But once you've submitted this, this, this technology, this just done. All right, guys. So uh, I've taken more than, I've taken an extra 30 seconds. Sorry, Solehan. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I will see you again. I'll see you next time. Good morning. Uh, doctor, doctor. Oh, sorry, doctor, yeah, sorry, doctor. Uh, doctor. Uh, from, uh, it's, it's me, Atana. Uh, uh, Prof would like to check if you uploaded the uh, unit 2 and unit 3 in which two the module? Uh, no, no, no. Everything uploaded, all the notes are there. Because uh, currently I'm at the uh, lock, uh, the, the module screen. But there's uh, bye bye. that uh, we could download from there. Unit 2 and unit 3 uh, in the uh, module. Big, big number 2. Okay, Faka, okay, Faka.
Is there an attachment for us to download from? Europe? I thought everyone can look at Europe. It's the same for everybody. Yeah, but it's just that for Unit 2 and Unit 3, uh, in weeks number 2, Business yeah. Mission and Mission, External Assessment, is that an attached note? No, no, nothing. Oh, nothing uh, things there. I yeah, know. don't bleed too much into things. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else? Thank you, Prof. Doctor, Prof. Tell me. Prof. Suganti here. Prof. Yeah, Suganti. Uh, Prof, this Tuesday we have class. Oh, based on the set schedule. It's this Tuesday. I, I did not mention it because it's already on the schedule. So it's Tuesday because uh, uh, we have Raya coming up and some of the holidays, stuff like that. Right. So yeah, Tuesday. Is, uh, thank you, Suganti. Much appreciated. All right, All right, thank you. The uh, I just prof, hello. I just want to ask a question can we add news portal such as Bernama New Street Time into the, in the reference? In uh, not the reference, you mean the emphasis? I have the reference, also can you can just put a citation in there for sure? Okay, Standard. thank you. Okay, very good. Surin, any questions? No, prof. All good so far. Oh, I know Surin was trying to ask a celebrity close. <laughs> I wanted to ask about the Tuesday class, but Suganti already asked, so yeah. Yeah, Suganti is too fast. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, bye.